Hello and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. Today, I want to talk about using a real-time entry to make drum beats. So uh, we're going to dive straight into Logic and what we're going to create today is the basic backbeat pattern that is famous on lots of songs in many different genres in order to be able to create a uh, real-time entry mode drum rhythm. So I'm working in Logic Pro 10.6 right now. Um, one of the first things I would say is if you come into a blank project like the one you see here, and you're going to record rhythm tracks in it, one of the most important things you can do is turn the metronome on. And to do that, you're simply going to click this little button right here or use the typing keyboard click of a K. And that is going to turn the click on. And the click is really important to being able to stay in time with what Logic is thinking. The second thing you're going to do is make sure that you adjust the tempo of Logic by clicking and dragging this little number right here to be the appropriate beats per minute rating that you would like to see your project be at. Then when you have the metronome on and the BPM set, when you hit play, you will hear the click. The higher pitch click is the downbeat of the measure or the first of a group of four beats. And that's really important because that lets you know where home base is at. Uh, then you, of course, want to add a drum. So I'm going to have my software instrument right here. Note, I did not create an automatic drummer. That's not the only way to drum. He does the drumming for us. You can watch that in another one of our Roaring Record videos. But we want to stay with the software instrument option, and that defaults to the electric piano. Now I'm going to pick a drum kit, and just because I love it so much, I'm going to use the SoCal kit. Then, in order to be able to see what is happening as I write, I'm going to use the edit window here by bringing the scissors up to be able to see my piano roll. We do not want the step sequencer here. That's, uh, again, covered in a different video. We rather want to see the piano roll. And as you look at the piano roll, you can see listed down the left side a set of instruments. So each key of the piano represents a different instrument. Uh, the main three that we're going to use are the kick sound, the snare rim shot sound and the closed hi-hat sound because those are the three key elements that you need to be able to create a good beat. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is turn on my loop region so I stay in this four measure set and I'm going to make a four measure back beat style rhythm. So I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to hit record. And for the backbeat, I want a kick drum to hit on every beat. The kick drum is C1 on, me, on my piano. And I want it to have that rock steady four on the floor feel. So I'm going to hit record. And since this is purple, I'm going to get four clicks for nothing. And then I'm going to start playing to stay nice and even with the beat. Here we go. And. and then I'm gonna pause it. And you'll notice that as I played, it added a note to my piano roll. This is MIDI information. This is where the note starts, where the note stops, and how hard I hit the note. You'll notice that most of my notes came in red, and that is a rather hard beat. But if you look closely, you will notice, I'm gonna use this zoom feature here, that my notes are not exactly on the rhythms of the beat because they're not with the grid lines. So I want to make sure 
that Logic knows to put my notes right with the grid line. So one thing I'm going to do to select all of the notes is select C1 over here in the piano. And that highlights every C1 that has been played in this MIDI region. Another way to do that would be to draw a box by clicking and dragging around it. But I don't think that's as efficient as clicking the C1. Then I'm going to come over here to my quantize menu. And quantizing means that it is going to snap everything to a grid marker. And the way I can quantize easiest here for the backbeat is to quantize to the quarter note. The quarter note is every beat that is played. So if we want it to be on every click of the metronome, we are going to quantize to the quarter note. And simply clicking the one quarter automatically quantizes this. And you can go through and make sure that everything came out right. And lo and behold, it is all right on the beat. And we are set and good to go on that front. So I just focused on the kick line there. Now I'm going to go back and record some snare because I want this to be more interesting. So to do the snare, I'm going to use this snare rim shot because I like the sound. And I'm going to play on beat two and four of every measure. So that happens to be right here and right here. So I'm going to hear a kick and then I'm going to play. Hear a kick, play. And that's going to be the rhythm that I follow. So here we go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you're counting in your head, you're going to play on two and four. And again, you'll notice that my notes are not exactly with the click. Once again, I'm going to hit the snare rim shot. And then I'm going to quantize to the quarter note again because I want them to be on every one, two, three, or four as it goes. So there I have quantized, and you can see if I zoom out a little bit, that they all line up across the board. So the final step to the uh, backbeat is we're going to add the hi-hat key on every eighth note, meaning we are going to play two hi-hats for every click of the metronome. So one and two and three and four and all the way across. So again, I'm going to start at the beginning and hit the record button, and this time record hi-hats. Okay, so we've got some hi-hats recorded in there, and you can even tell at this zoom level that they're not all right. So I'm going to select all of them in the hi-hat range, and then I'm going to go and I have to adjust this time because I can't quantize to the quarter note because here's what happens. Oops, half of my notes went away. So I'm going to undo that move right quick with a command Z. And then I need to quantize this time to the eighth note, which eighth note is two hits per beat. So when I quantize to the eighth note, boom, that fixes everything. Furthermore, a sixteenth note would be to every uh, quarter of a beat or four four sixteenth notes and one beat, and that's every grid line that you see right here. So if you wrote something that's a little more hip hoppy than this and you want some uh, nice tight kicks, then you may want to quantize to the sixteenth note. You always must quantize to the smallest note separation that you had in your rhythm, but for this purpose of creating the backbeat, we know that we can quantize to the eighth note. So now we have our backbeat created. And you're probably already in your head starting to hear some different uh, songs come to mind. If I was to bump the tempo up now to 116, you might hear this. And just for the fun of it, if I was to slide over this little riff that I made earlier, you would hear that this is a very famous drum pattern to this song. Yeah, 
yeah, Michael Jackson made a killing on Billie Jean with this very basic backbeat drum rhythm. I hope you found this helpful. You could always play all three notes in at the same time if you're a talented uh, finger drummer, but if you don't have that skill yet, feel free to just do one line at a time and just hit record right over the top and it'll write them all together in your drum track that you are choosing to use. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe below. Thanks for watching today.